This is Join Us in France, episode 190. Bonjour, I'm Annie, and Join Us in France is the podcast where we talk about France, its many quirks, its history, its language, and, of course, destinations in France you want to learn about because, hopefully, you'll be visiting soon. Join Us in France is brought to you by Patreon supporters and Addicted to France, the small group tour company for people who want to enjoy France to the fullest with zero stress. Check out our upcoming tours in May 2018 on addictedtofrance.com. On today's episode, let's talk about having a picnic in Paris. I'll tell you about my 12 favorite places to have a picnic in Paris I haven't had 12 picnics in Paris yet. Sometimes I just go there to enjoy my little afternoon pastry or crepe or something like that. I go for the view more than anything, but these are 12 really good spots. I'll also tell you about some great French picnic foods, some I am quite sure you've never tried before, and some that will only be for the more adventurous eaters among us. And hey, you're going to Paris, don't forget to pack your corkscrew in your checked luggage, of course. You should open a couple of bottles while in Paris, don't you think? And because it's new and exciting, I want to mention right at the beginning of the show that Join Us in France is now on the Amazon Echo or Dot. All you have to do to get started is say, Alexa, enable Join Us in France and Off you go. You can now listen on your Alexa machine. And if you're helping someone else listen to the show, for which I am grateful, keep in mind that they can also listen on Spotify, Google Play Store, iTunes. It's getting super easy to listen to podcasts. Not just this one, but any podcast. The show notes for this episode are on joinusinfrance.com forward slash 190, the number where you can see all of these French names I'll be using throughout the episode. Oh, a picnic in Paris <laughs> on a warm sunny day. What a good idea. There are always people enjoying their lunch outside when the weather is nice in France. Does that count as a picnic? I think so. I'll tell you about great Picnic spots for couples, great places for people with kids, picnics for people who are tight on time and money, and for those who have more funds. There's a picnic place and a picnic budget for everyone in Paris. What I will not tell you about is the many picnic companies in Paris where you hire someone to bring you everything you want at a given time and place. You can do that too. I haven't tried any of them, so I don't want to give an opinion one way or the other. I'm going to tell you how to do this DIY. Now, the word picnic doesn't mean the same thing for everyone, does it? For some of us, it means a picturesque... No, no, that's a hard word to say. A picturesque meadow, a lake with some boats, a picnic blanket, a wicker basket with amazing foods inside, maybe even women wearing gorgeous dresses and hats, just like it was in the paintings. For some of us, having a picnic means we just got off work at lunch and we stopped by the nearest grocery store, got a pre-made sandwich and a drink and went to enjoy it on a bench outside. You'll see a lot of groups of students doing that around Paris, guys who are still wearing their work clothes, moms who grab a bite while their kids run around the playground. That's the simplest iteration of the picnic in France. In this episode, I won't try to tell you how simple or fancy your picnic should be. My goal here is to share some of the places I like to go have a picnic in Paris 
and what I think makes them a good place to go. What you bring to the picnic and how dressed up you get, that's your business. As far as the food is concerned, well, I don't think that the food is what matters most when having a picnic, but that's just my personal opinion. If I want a gourmet dinner, I'll go to a gourmet restaurant. But there are some fun and unusual French picnic foods that I want to tell you about and also talk about where you can get them. Generally speaking, I'm not going to give you the one address you need to go to because I'm totally against that and I hate people who do that. Sorry. <laughs> Some of us will want to buy more expensive wine and cheese. Some of us will be happy with everyday quality products. I won't try to argue with you either way. Your wallet, your choice. If you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, you know that I was raised blue collar in France. My father was an electrician and my mother was a homemaker. They took us kids all over France and we picnicked everywhere we went. So I give you my podcast blessing right now. If you feel like going to Franc Prix or Paul or any place you can grab a sandwich ready-made, Do it and enjoy it. That's the way most French people have their picnics. So why wouldn't you do that too? And I won't try to list all the places you could have a picnic in Paris. There are 500 parks scattered all around Paris. Some of them very small, some very big. Any of them would be a fine choice for a picnic. And sometimes the simplest choice, the one close to where you are right now, is the best choice So always balance the desire to try something you heard mentioned on the podcast with the time investment it'll take. If you have a perfectly good picnic place next to where your hotel is, maybe that's the best choice for you. Also, let me address the question of drinking wine while on your picnic in Paris right up front. Everybody understands that it's fine to have some wine with your picnic, You're in Paris, there's wine for sale everywhere. We understand. However, French people don't have a high tolerance for public drunkenness. In Germany, they have Oktoberfest, where public drunkenness is a given. I've seen places in London and in Glasgow where people are drunk out of their skull in public and nobody bats an eye. This is not France, okay? In France, there is a fine line between getting a little buzzed and getting drunk. When people get to the point when they're drunk, they do bad things. Like, for example, they might break their bottle of wine accidentally. That's unsafe for everybody else who walks near there. Uh, they might throw up. They may get aggressive. They might fall asleep. They might start talking or singing at the top of their lungs. And that's so annoying. It happens so often. And none of those things are acceptable in Paris, okay? So if you get a little buzzed and you talk a little bit louder or you gesticulate more than usual, that's really not a big deal. You need to keep it to where you still have your wits about you. You can walk straight. You remember to pick up your trash before you go. And if you can keep it reasonable, maybe two drinks, okay, maybe three at most, there won't be any problems. But if you're so drunk, you can remember how many drinks you've had. That's bad, and you'll find some trouble in Paris because, you know, people will call the cops on you. It's, uh, yeah. And always, always, always leave the place clean after you're done. Bring a trash bag. And that's all for the preachy part of the show today. <laughs> so let's talk about places where I'd go have my picnic in Paris. I have tried to give a good mix of suggestions that are Uh, right at the heart of Paris and easy to get to if you're a typical visitor with accommodations in the center of the city. But I will also suggest some that are a little outside, but still worth it. My first three choices in what I call the hyper center of Paris are right along the river on the left bank. They are all within a mile of one another. Uh, I'll, I'll send out a map with all of this written out to the people who subscribe to the extras. But you can also see a lot of that on the website, joinusinfrance.com 190. Number one, the best place for a picnic in Paris, I think, is Le Pont des Arts, especially in the evening. 
le pont des Arts et ce pedestrian bridge, not far from the île de la Cité, not far from the Louvre. It's a nice wooden deck material. You can sit on the, on the deck. There are a few benches in the center, uh, but really mostly most people sit on, on the deck. The bridge railing is see-through now that they've removed all the god-awful so-called love locks that I hate. And what a view you have from there now. You will have the Pont Neuf, not very far, the Louvre on one side, the Académie Française on the other. It's a wonderful photo spot. If the sitting on the ground is not an issue for you, that would be my first choice. You're not far from Saint-Germain-des-Prés, that beautiful neighborhood, uh, where there are a lot of places you can buy your picnic foods. So if you're strolling around Saint-Germain-des-Prés, select a few things you want to eat and drink and make your way down to the Pont des Arts. Number two, another good choice near there is the Vert Galant Park. This is a great place for romantic couples and you will witness a fair amount of public displays of affection. But it is such a gorgeous spot right between the two arms of the Seine River. You'll get a nice view of the Louvre, the Pont des Arts, a nice place to see the sunset also. There are maybe a dozen benches at the Vert Galant, but the park itself is small and sometimes it can be crowded. So try it. Like the Pont des Arts, you know, there might be too many people, move on to the next one, but it's worth a try. Number three, my third choice would be along the Seine River on Quai des Tournelles. You will have a wonderful view to the back of Notre Dame. Lots of places where you can sit, not necessarily benches per se, but there are lots of ledges and where it's fine to sit and it's comfortable. You'll see all the boats come and go. You'll see the lights fading over Notre Dame if you go in the evening. I love that spot. It's also a good spot to go have a crab or something. It's, it's just beautiful. Number four, still in the left bank, but further away from the river, is the Jardin du Luxembourg. It would be high on my list of places to go for a picnic in Paris. I just love the place. We talked about it in detail in episode 184. So I'll encourage you to listen to that for all the details. It's a great choice for a picnic, but you cannot sit on the grass. They do provide wonderful chairs and benches, and it's also a great place to go with kids. Now, let's go to the right bank, the other side of the river. Number five, you can have a wonderful picnic on Place des Vosges, of course. It's in the heart of the Marais. Go grab your falafel at Las du Falafel or at one of the other takeout food places on Rue des Rosiers and eat it while sitting on the grass on the Place des Vosges. There's also a famous crepe place on Rue des Rosiers. It's called La Droguerie, and it's a really good takeout. Uh, now, this picnic takes no preparation at all, does it? You, all you need is nice weather. I mean, there are some park benches, but the Place des Vosges is a popular place. You'll probably have to sit on the grass. And the view around the grand architecture of the Place des Vosges is just beautiful. Uh, there's a small Playground for kids, eh, it's very small. <laughs> it's for young kids, it's very small. But the food and the view should just keep everybody happy in the family for a bit. Number six. Here's one most people won't think about. It is uh, the Palais Royal. It's great for a picnic. Have you ever heard of the Colonne de Buren? Um, if you don't know the name, you've probably seen the photos. I'll put one on the on joinusinfrance.com forward slash 190. It's a strange and interesting permanent modern art installation. It's a big courtyard surrounded by beautiful buildings. And these buildings are the home of the French Culture Ministry and the Comédie Française. It's like the, the Royal Shakespeare Company in London. And right next to the Palais Royal, you have the Jardin du Palais Royal. It's a small little garden. It's really well kept. It's got nice benches, beautiful, very posh, not a branch out of line. And what's nice about having a picnic at the Jardin du Palais Royal is that you'll find places to buy your picnic foods nearby. There's some nice takeout places, uh, 
right around the streets around there, there's also a nice vegetarian and vegan place on uh, 41 Rue des Bourdonnais. Um, I'll put the, the address on the show notes. But, you know, there's all sorts of food vendors right in the neighborhood. And it's a nice neighborhood to go discover walking around. So great choice, even if it's not one that most people think about. Okay, let's move west a little bit. Number seven, how about the Champ de Mars or the Trocadero? Well, yes, having a picnic facing the Eiffel Tower is a super popular thing to do. If you approach from the Champ de Mars area, you'll have uh, you'll walk past several food vendors, grocery stores, that sort of thing, around the École Militaire metro stop. Go look around the neighborhood a little bit. There are a lot of uh, choices you can make there, and it's also a wonderful Paris neighborhood. Or you could go to the Trocadero metro stop and be a little bit higher up on the other side of the river. Both sides have great views. Sometimes the Champ de Mars is blocked off for something or other. Sometimes uh, they're setting up for an event or maybe they're letting the grass recover from an event. Um, so maybe the Trocadero is a safer bet, but either way, you'll have to walk a bit to find your perfect spot. But the Eiffel Tower is right there. It's beautiful. Now, this is not an original suggestion, okay? There are so many people doing it that you'll see Indian guys walking around selling you, you know, five euro wine bottles for 20 euros, of course. <laughs> you know, business is business. Um, but it's a good place for a picnic and the view is wonderful. And the fact that so many people don't do it shouldn't stop you. I mean, the view is amazing. So, okay, let's get a little bit further out from the center. Number eight, for those of you who are around Montmartre, there is a nice little public park. It's called Square Marcel Bloustine Blanchet. It's right next to the Sacré-Cœur. I'll, I'll write it out for you, don't worry. <laughs> uh, you have great views onto the Basilica, uh, some views towards the city as well. It's not a place that's known to the hordes of tourists that normally grace, or shall I say, plague Montmartre. So you'll have some peace and quiet there. There are a lot of benches and places you can sit. There is no playground, but it's a fenced and safe area for kids to run around. In Montmartre, you could also go to the Wall of Love near the Abbess metro station, but it's more of a place to stand and watch. I think there are only two or three benches and a lot of people coming and going. Maybe that's a good place to go eat your crepe or your ice cream rather than a meal. It's also lovely. Okay, number nine. Let's go east to the 19th arrondissement. You could go to the Butte Chaumont Park. It gets beautiful views over Paris, nice green surroundings, but you are far away from central Paris. I've been there a few times. I like going there. Uh, but is it worth taking the time to go that far? Well, you need to decide. And it depends where you're staying, too. Maybe you're staying close to it. If you're going to take photos, if you're going for the view, take a 200 millimeter lens. And if you have a 300, that would be better because uh, it's, Paris, central Paris is far away. And you'll need a tripod, obviously, because, you know, you're far from the center. You need to have a nice steady shot. You, uh, you will not run into lots of tourists there most days. And it's also good for people with kids who want to go in the daytime because... You know, there's a really nice playground and other things for kids. But I wouldn't go there after dark, okay? I'm not saying that it's scary, but it's not the poshest part of Paris. And it's the only part of Paris that I'm mentioning today that's not posh. So, number 10, back to posh Paris. Another one that's great for people with kids is the Square des Batignolles. It's a little English garden in the 17th arrondissement. It's not a big place. It's quite popular because it's really scenic. There are ducks, a playground, benches, but sitting on the grass is not allowed in that park. Notice how it changes, right? Some parks allow it, some don't. There's a little river thing. There's some caves. 
I mean, my description doesn't do it justice. It's really <laughs> scenic. Google it, you'll, you'll like it. And it's also a great place if you want to, your kids to uh, play with French kids because it's not really a hot spot for tourists. Number 11, not too far from the Square des Batignolles, you have the Parc Monceau. That's also a favorite of French people and quite posh. You will find a lot of benches, a playground, uh, you can sit and run on the grass. The area is full of beautiful 19th century palaces and mansions, including the Musée Nissime de Camondo that we described in episode 187, Overview of Paris Museum. It's a lovely neighborhood for visitors who want to get out of the purely touristy scene and see life in Paris for locals. Okay, only life for well-off locals, but the, the area is lovely. And in between the Square des Batignolles and the Parc Monceau, so the last two I mentioned, you have a typical pedestrian Paris street called Rue Lévis. It's got lots of interesting food vendors, and it's a good place to go if you want to see something like Rue Claire. But it's better than Rue Claire because it's genuine and it's, you know, not frequented by 99% tourists. So to me, that keeps it real. Um, so if you're going to picnic at either Square des Batignolles or Parc Monceau, buy your picnic foods on Rue Lévis first and you'll have two great Paris experiences. And last but not least, even though it's far away, number 12, Lac Domenil in the Bois de Vincennes. It's gorgeous. There are little rowboats. Uh, getting there takes a lot of dedication, but if you want to reproduce the picturesque picnics you've seen in the paintings, that would be the place to go. All right, let's talk about French picnic foods. I opened the episode with the admission, it's something I'm proud of, that I was raised blue collar in France, and it's going to show a little bit. I like my simple, everyday French picnic foods. And I'm a little paranoid about food poisoning, so I like my picnic foods to spend as little time as possible outside of the fridge. So if you have access to a kitchen in Paris, you could make your food and take it with you. In that case, be mindful how long the food is going to be out of the fridge, especially in the spring and summer when it's hot out. You can buy pre-made sandwiches in almost any boulangerie in France. Some specialize in selling sandwiches, like the bakery chain Paul, which is pretty good. I'm sorry, but it's good. Even their bread is good. I think their whole wheat bread is the best whole wheat bread in France. Anyway, bakeries that sell sandwiches will also sell you pastries, drinks, chips. Sometimes they'll sell salads. I see nothing wrong at all with having that sort of picnic, which puts me at odds with Vogue magazine that wrote an article recently specifically instructing Americans not to grab something quick. Oi, you know, I mean, you can have a picnic any way you like. They, who are they telling you what to do? You know, eh. <laughs> The other way you can do this, of course, is go buy your picnic stuff at the grocery store. For that, I would stick to the recognizable grocery store brands because sometimes the little corner grocery store owned by whoever, they don't have the freshest stuff on hand. But you'll recognize the bigger brand stores, even if it's your first time in France. They, they are called Franprix, Carrefour, Monoprix, Casino... Oh yeah, casino, a casino in France is not a gambling place. It's, well, most casinos in France are not gambling places. They are grocery stores. You'll find a number of grocery stores that specialize in organic, and those are called bio something or other, like bio. So it's going to be bio cup or something. There's, you know, all sorts of names. Those are really big in France. At the grocery store, you'll be able to get quite a bit more daring and buy typical French picnic products that I bet you've never tried before. So here's how you do it. You go to the area where they sell the ready-made sandwiches. It's a refrigerated case. And take a look at the salads. Some are regular green salads. Boring. But that's also where you'll find 
the fun French things. So um, grated carrot salad, the grated celery root salad. That's, that's called celery rave in French. The sliced cucumber salads with uh, fromage blanc for dressing. Uh, we have the cubed beet salad. All those are great vegetarian choices. You'll also find a tabbouleh salad. Some of those are vegetarian, some have a little chicken or a shrimp. Um, and then look for something called, this is for the daring people, look for something called salade de museau. This is definitely not vegetarian. It's a prepared pork product, or it can be a beef product too, if you get it from a kosher store. It's a kind of a sliced meat product with sliced onions and pickles and a really vinegary dressing. I love this stuff. It's extremely fatty. It will give you a heart attack. It might taste strange to you if you've never had anything like it. But for me, once a year for a picnic, it's a treat. And I always remember that my father insisted on having some of that at all of our picnics growing up. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, it's very French blue color. You'll also find all sorts of pâtés at the grocery store. So you have pâté de campagne, pâté de foie. If you want to get fancy, you could buy a small glass jar of foie gras at the grocery store. I wouldn't... Okay, if you go look in the refrigerated case, you'll find foie gras, uh, but that's vacuum packed and it's usually the whole liver, the whole foie. That's, I wouldn't buy that uh, if I was just trying it for the first time because it'll run you 50 euros and it's big and you're not going to eat all that unless there's 20 of you. You can find small jars, glass jars for maybe 15 euros. And those you would find uh, in the area where they sell regional products. At the grocery store, you can also get cold cuts, dry sausages, hams. French ham is so much better than American ham, in my opinion, obviously. There's a, try one called jambon au torchon. It's so good. Uh, jambon de Bayonne is also good. That's a cured ham. Um, it's not my favorite, but, you know, you could take a trip all over France just trying different regional specialties. And, of course, we have the cheeses. And that's another way to travel all through France with the regional specialties. Even a small grocery store in France will have more choices for cheese than the fanciest American grocery store in the western U.S., where I usually go. And if you go to a bigger grocery store in France, you will find a cheese counter where there's going to be a person that will slice whatever you want. If you can get it from the counter, it's better than the pre-wrapped stuff and not a lot more money. So I recommend looking out for that. Don't be shy about asking for small amounts of different cheeses. That's why they have the cheese counter. And don't expect free samples. That's not commonly done, but they'll sell you small amounts uh, if that's what you want. At the grocery store, I recommend you spend some time looking at all the items. You'll recognize some items, but not that many. And I think it's fun to look at the different things, don't you? You can buy sodas, bottled water, wine, and beer at the grocery store. Get your kids to try some Orangina. It's the French orange soda. They might love it. They might not like it, but I think it's nice. You can also get uh, picnic plates and cups at the grocery store. It won't be anything fancy, but, you know, it'll get the job done. And if you refuse to drink wine out of a plastic cup, I congratulate you. You have been raised well. <laughs> you can find... Uh, uh, wine glasses for like th three or four euros. So you'll find the thing of three wine glasses for th three or four euros in most grocery stores. So, uh, oh, and uh, one word of warning, um, French grocery store corkscrews are really bad. So bring one from home because uh, you'll get frustrated and we'll break the cork with those awful things. Now let's go towards a little fancier and more expensive foods. 
You could, of course, go to separate stores to get all your different picnic foods. You could go to a cheese shop. You could go to a charcuterie. You could go to a boulangerie. Okay, I should have said that at the, at the top. Get your bread from a boulangerie and not from the grocery store. Some French grocery store bread is okay, but any old boulangerie should do better. Going to a proper cheese store, and there are a lot of them in Paris, opens up a bigger cheese selection for you. And that can be both a good and a bad thing. For a first timer in France... All of our cheeses can get really overwhelming. I've seen people gag by the strong smell of all the cheeses in the store because they've never been in a place like that. We have lots of cheeses made of raw milk and many of the ones you will find at a proper cheese store are made of raw milk. The word is les crus in French. And not everybody wants that. And if your gut hasn't been trained to raw milk, you may not enjoy the digestive process. I'm not saying you'll die from hysteria because, you know, raw cheese producers are really careful about the, how the milk is handled from, from the farm to the store. But if it's new to you, it could cause some digestive discomfort. But cheese stores is where you will find some out outrageous French cheeses. Get small quantities. I never met an American who enjoyed odd French cheeses all that much. Okay, my husband loves them, but he's, really, he's unusual and he's been in France for 13 years. It's a matter of palate training. Most people can't go from plain cheddar to an incredible roquefort from some tiny producer in the mountains that only makes like 100 pounds of cheese per year and sells it expensive enough that they can live on that. I have one small thing of roquefort like that in my fridge right now. My husband got it at a fancy cheese shop. I can't eat it. Uh, it's so strong and so salty, but he eats it a tiny bit at a time. Now you know what you're getting into. So I also recommend that if you go to a cheese shop, you listen to the clerks because they can advise you for or against certain products. They know that most visitors from North America will want something a little milder and they reserve the really odd cheeses for locals. So I think it's better that way, you know, so you're you're at a place that can give you advice do ask and let's end on the unspoken rule of all good picnics in france you must end your meal with a dessert of some sort you will find nice pastries in most boulangeries in paris are there differences between those boulangerie pâtisserie are some pastry shops better than others yes Definitely. But those differences are too subtle for most people to tell any difference. You know what happens when you do blind wine tastings, right? French wine snobs pick wines from California because they taste good. It's the same with pastries. If you don't know where the products came from, you probably wouldn't know any better. So a remember that a lot of what we perceive as quality has to do with marketing more than anything. So try the pâtisserie or the boulangerie or one that does both closest to you. And don't worry about what you read online. Most pastry chefs in France follow the same classic recipes and they all use the same ingredients. It's just that some pastry chefs have more know-how and a lot better marketing. Once you've been in France many times and you're starting to get a taste for subtle differences, then it's worth going out of your way to try fancier places. But getting started with the bread and pastries from almost anywhere in France is great for first-time visitors. So to conclude, let me encourage you again to go have a picnic. You will enjoy it. There are glorious places in Paris to do that. And it will also save you some money, you know, because uh, if you don't have to do a sit-down restaurant every meal, well, that's, that's good on the pocketbook. Thank you, Paige Anderson, Kim Martin, Everybody's National Parks, and Stephen Heiner for pledging to support the show on Patreon this week. 
My thanks also to all the patrons who support the show month after month. Thank you for giving back. To support the show on Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash join us, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, join us with no spaces or dashes, and you guys rock. The RATP, that's the Metro Authority in Paris, is doing more enforcement of rules and sending out their teams to give out tickets to offenders. And I want to talk about this because it's a new push and because one of the people who participate in the Join Us in France closed group on Facebook got fined and it rattled her quite a bit and I understand why. It was a long day on their feet and her husband put his feet on the seat in front of him and they got fined 60 euros on the spot by someone who wasn't pleasant about it. So I went looking for some of of the behaviors that they are looking for to warn you because they're not doing a real good job at informing the public, although some of these things are... uh, common sense. But anyway, they will find people who have a Navigo pass, even if it's valid, if they didn't scan it when they entered. And this happened to my daughter in Toulouse and it made us both really mad, but they need people to flash their card so they can keep accurate stats. Traveling without a ticket will get you fined. Okay, that's a given. Urinating in the metro will get you fined. Okay, please, more of those tickets. Forgetting your bag on the metro will get you fined now. This is a biggie because whenever a a zipped up bag, a backpack or something is left behind in the metro, they have to assume it's a bomb and they call the bomb squad. That stops the traffic. It's a huge pain. It's a huge cost. But, you know, I've forgotten stuff on public transportation myself, so I know it happens without any evil intent, but now it will cost. No skates, no skateboards or things with wheels, uh, you know, for kids and stuff uh, on the metro. No wheelies, you know, the wheelies that were so popular with kids long ago? Well, uh, no more of that. And and I do get that. Now, that doesn't mean strollers and wheelchairs, obviously. It's just those... uh, Uh, recreational kind of transportation things. Um, You can't stay in the train past the last stop or you will get fined. This is for the (laughs) heavy sleepers, I guess. Um, They do have to send staff out to check all the trains. So that makes sense to me. No putting your feet on the seats. Okay, I understand that rule, but Who hasn't done it? You know, it's a lapse in judgment. It's a minor offense, but it'll get you a 60 euro fine. So they really care about that. Uh, They don't want people trying to break any of the equipment or forcing the doors open. If they catch you, that's another 60 euros. They don't want begging in the metro. And I don't really know how they will enforce that. You know, I don't like the folks who get inside the cars to beg. But sometimes I I like the singers in the tunnels, so I don't know what they're going to do there. You can't transport something too bulky or too smelly on the metro. The smelly part made me laugh. Uh, But that doesn't mean suitcases, okay? Relax. Um, It's just, you know. I've seen people with stuff on the metro that I was like, really? You're taking your IKEA furniture on the metro? (laughs) Smoking on the metro is, uh, that's what will get you the heaviest fine. That's 60 euro, 68 euros fine. And the one that surprised me the most, because it sounds so innocuous, is walking the wrong way. So, you know, they have signs of when you en- where you enter and when you exit the tunnels where we walk. Um, well, if you exit through the entrance, they'll give you a fine. Only locals ever do that because they know the tunnels and they figured out that it's a little shorter if you exit through the entrance. Uh, But they just find a pregnant woman who was trying to save herself a few steps by going the wrong way. And the Twitter went crazy over that. (laughs) Well, okay, so don't do that. If it says exit, take the exit. Moral of the story is... The enforcers are out in force in the Paris metro. 
I'm not sure how I feel about this. I understand why it can't be anything goes and and I also understand why they can't just give warnings because you know when you say to your agents, okay, you can warn people. Well, the cute blondes always get the warnings and everybody else gets the fines. So that's wrong too, okay? So yeah, um just be on your best behavior. Now, this is not an official list. I got this list from news reports about this. I have written to the RATP, RATP, to ask them if they have an official list. And if they write back, I will report back on that as soon as they do. The best way to connect with me is via email, annie at joinusinfrance.com. Or if you have a question you'd like answered on the show, leave a message on 1-801-806-1015. You can also join the awesome Join Us in France close group on Facebook, where lots of knowledgeable folks hang out and exchange friends tip advice. And of course, you can also join the email extras that I send out once a week. Uh, this week, it'll be the list of all of these picnic places in Paris and maps and things like that. Au revoir. Have a wonderful week of trip planning. The Join Us in France Travel Podcast is written and produced by Annie Sargent and copyright 2017 by Addicted to France. It is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license.